guys, and welcome to the 2018 Spring Arena Clash. We are back and bigger than ever. 19 arenas will battle it out across the UK to take home the championship of four titles. My name is Rage, and I'm joined here by Stealth. Hello. And we are here today in the Bristol Smugglers Arena. So, Stealth, you're back. You're becoming a bit of an expert to this, aren't you? I mean, some say expert. I prefer the term arena genius, but uh, who's picking the straws here, eh? <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'm excited to see what your views and opinions are on this season. But before we jump into the action, let's cast our minds back to last season. Lovely punish there. And he's got the wall out. Is he going to get the full finish? He wow. is. Oh. Excellent slice step. Gets the full combo in the back. Oh, oh my Pancake God. is playing like a god. And London Lionhearts will be your winter 2017 Tekken 7 champions. Portsmouth just jumping straight onto the point now, trying to contest. Portsmouth take home. Numbani, map number one. Teesside trying to push their way through, just diving onto it. Unfortunately for them, they will fall short and Portsmouth take it. But there's oh. the Rocket Barrage once more is going to find two and Howl Aloud is such a terror in the air. And Colchester just seem unstoppable. It's down to Howl Aloud. If he can get this the next kill, which he does, and they clean the board basically. If Reese is left to defend on their own, that's it. That's game. That's already over. How that's quick it. is that? Colchester trying to pick up the pieces here, but they're just going to go down, trying to stall it out. There's the Diva ultimate. That'll shut it down. Portsmouth for the win. All allowed, able to stay alive. The backup comes through. Colchester holds strong. There's 10 seconds left on the clock. Portsmouth have no one around. They're just going to get shut out, and Colchester will be your winners. Feather Storm out, it's going to be Divinus, but a five-man shockwave once Cock again. Cockball's dead. Cockball's down, and they're still alive as Craven is chasing in for the kill. Third in Havens of Fools, Portsmouth, with 31 minutes on the clock, are looking to try to run away with this game. But the Supers are pushing in for the end. Portsmouth maybe have done this just with the minions. Chins out, gets himself one. Young finds the next one with a blade cooler. It's got and the minions. Again, the minions drop the next hit. Portsmouth. Once again, are the Arena Clash champions. So, they were some pretty incredible plays last season, but it's all going to change this season as we have four new arenas entering our roster. Who are they, Stealth? Well, we've got the Bradford Rams, the Clyde Claymores, Nottingham Alt, and of course, Bristol Crips. Ah, yeah, another Bristol team for Stealth to be disappointed by then. Oh, come on, you can't be doing that to me. That's just too savage, especially on camera. <laughs> it's okay, though, because I could talk some smack about Cardiff, but I'll let the games do all the talking instead. Well, enough of your bad team choices. Let's get into our first highlights of 2018. Tekken 7 this season is made up of four groups. The main action this week is going to come from Group B, and that will see last season's runners-up, the York Vikings, go up against the Norfolk Nighthawks. Eternal Dragon is your caster for this, and we join the action in the first match with the York's Bufflers up against Norfolk's Shadow Realm. Excellent block. Wow, they, he's just swinging at him, and he goes for the Rage Art again. He's going to absorb the hit, but now he's used all of his Rage and he has to have a Completely raw combat there with no rage there. Just poking. Now with Bufflar's in rage. Slow mo. Oh, and he takes it. Two rounds up. Just backdashing there. Crazy. And now he's, he's just partying. And yeah, he just hits him with the rage art. Probably should have saved it though, because now he has to have a comeback without the benefit of the rage damage. But he probably was getting annoyed from just the trolling. <laughs> from Buff Lars there. Just backing off. And he kills himself. <laughs> York dominated the next six matches. We rejoin the action in match eight, where York's Sunny Boy takes on Norfolk's Shadow Realm. And Norfolk are on the back foot. Excellent parry there. He was not having any of that. Sunny Boy was just doing the same all over again. He was like, nope, not having none of that. But he then actually hits him with his... 
max damage combo, takes him downstairs. Wow, he gets him with the backswing blow. Is he going to go downstairs? No, takes to the wall. Wall to wall combos and spike to the ground. Wow, 50%. Come on, bro. Takes him downstairs again. This is what you have to do on this sort of level. You have to break the floors. Will this hit? No, it didn't. Right, yeah, that's it. You have to pressure him. Just keep off the offense. He's, he's trying to style, and there we go. He was trying to style with a parry, and he gets that. Round Robin 1 closed out with York undefeated. Round Robin 2 was going the same way, but during this, the Vikings started spam picking Paul. The Nighthawks saw an opening. Another throw, not broken. Goes to low sweep there. Unblockable again. Running straight in there. Goes in for the cross chop. Back against the wall now. Power crush, excellent. Absorbs the hit there. Rage death fist, blocked at the wall. One more round and Norwich are going to take this. Just one more hit. Oh, guess with the launch. Is that it? Back against the wall. He needs to get out of this. Sidestep from Buff Lars. Gets him with the unblockable again and three rounds up. Well done. Well done to the Norwich team. They got the win on there. They showed that you can pick the same character and try and troll, but that's what will happen in tournaments, you know, and it'll cost you the match. So that is well deserved from the team there. You know, they may have been getting uh, beaten in the previous matches, but in my book, that, that's a win, that's that's a victory. And the York team just weren't able to deal with it because they don't have enough experience using Paul. You know, everyone can use Paul, and when you've got some impression you like that, you can't just pull out your secondary character or your, even your third tier character and expect to win. So excellent play from the York team from just going full steam ahead, using a power crush when it needed to be used, nice with punish and got the round there as well. So the results for the first week of Tekken are as follows. The Lionhearts beat Teesside and the MK Enigmas beat the Claymores placing Lionhearts and Enigmas top of Group A. As we saw, York Vikings beat the Norfolk Nighthawks in Group B with Portsmouth Pirates beating the Tyneside Guardians in that group's other fixture. Group C saw the Centurions beat the Smugglers and the Harriers beat the Plymouth Armada. Over in Group D, Bradford Rams lost in their debut against the Craig of Onkestrels and the Humber Hunters lost to the Cardiff Saints. York have got the strong start that they wanted, with only losing one game to the Nighthawks. But can they step it up and defeat the mighty Lionhearts? Next, we have... Whoa. Sorry, I've got to stop you there. It's my time to shine. It's time for a god among games. A lion. A titan. A moment of silence, please. It's Call of Duty. We all knew it wouldn't be too long before Call of Duty was back in the arena clash, and here it is. Eight teams are playing this week against four groups. And what better way to start this week for stealth than to see the smugglers face off against the Plymouth Armada. Despite all the ribbon, I hope this one goes well for yourself. Call of Duty World War II this week saw Plymouth absolutely dominate the first hard point. From early on, it seemed Bristol were on the back foot. But early in the first search and destroy, it looked like the smugglers had other plans. We join Chris Stealth as your caster in round number four of Search and Destroy. The bomb being planted at B. Himself has Mountain and also has the FG42, much more preferred in these sorts of situations. 36 seconds and counting. Mark making his slow way across towards the back end of the B bomb site. Nothing spotted. <gasps> He hasn't seen him on his screen. He has now gets the shots off. Is he able to connect with them? No, managed to get a few shots off, but can't end up getting the kill. Ultimately, doesn't go for the defuse just yet. <gasps> Goes for the defuse now. <gasps> Spots him over the back end of things. He has time to get the defuse as well. Coming in clutch. Mark, GG's my friend. 3-1 up now for Bristol. But look at this. This is a very odd push coming in from Plymouth. How's it going to work out for them? Pete managed to take down Shea from up top. Shots have been fired. But look at this coming in. Who is that on on the flank? That will be Taco. What is he able to do with this one? Let's hop on board with him. He has spotted one player. Pre fires round to the side. Not able to connect with anything. Bomb has been planted. Shots are being fired as well. Let's hop on board with that man at the top of your screen there. That will be Jord. Let's got one coming on to the flank. Is the kill. That's huge. Does get traded out, however. Two versus three. 
Big shots coming in once again. And now it's just down to Mark in a one versus one. This is do or die round 11. He has 20 seconds left on the clock. Goes for the shots, gets a few off away for himself. Before he gets taken down in the end. Bird Boy comes out in the end on, on top of this one. Bird Boy clutches up huge for Plymouth and they will take the first best of three. The first search and destroy was down to the wire. Bristol really needed to pull some magic out of the bag in the second half point, but again, it was a disappointing result for the smugglers, with them losing out to the Armada 249 to 114. All of Bristol's hopes were now pinned on the second search and destroy. We rejoin the action in round four with Bristol 2 1 up. Shots have been fired, and it will be Buzzy with the opening pick. Takes down Mark. George pushed his way out towards the back end of A bomb site. Shots again fired. John with the pick this time round has taken out one there. Let's see what he's able to do. He takes down a second lovely drop shot from him. Has now left this one man, George, all alone. One versus two. Bomb has been planted though, so he has that advantage. He may want to check behind him, however. Unfortunately for him, as he goes to peek his way round, Bird Boy was there to shut him down. And Pete will go for the defuse. So it's now a one versus one. This is intense. John versus Bird Boy. And you kind of favor uh, Bird Boy in this sort of instance due to how well he has been playing throughout this series. So he does it, really, if I was him. <gasps> He's got him. Back on the map, he's able to get the shots away. He's not able to do so. Bird Boy will shut him down. And Plymouth will take the second best of three series take all three points away from the Bristol Smugglers. So my player of the game this week has to come in the form of a round 11 clutch in a 1v1. It all starts with this. George picks up one before being traded out by Buzzy. And then John picks up a huge kill there before being taken out himself. It's down to Bird Boy and Mark left in a one versus one. Mark has the advantage. He has the head glitch on the bomb, but Bird Boy decides to dive bomb his way out with the PPSH shuts him down and secures the first round win for Plymouth. In Group A, Enigmas beat the Bradford Rams and York Vikings beat the Kingston Harriers. Group B, Claymores beat the Nighthawks and the Lionhearts beat the Hunters. Group C, Bristol Smugglers lost to the Armada and watch, I bet Stealth is so heartbroken he won't even mention this match. He'll pretend like it never happened. In the other matchup, Portsmouth Pirates beat the Colchester Centurions. Group D, Cardiff beat the Bristol Cribs. Go Cardiff! The Craig Von Kestrels drew to the Teesside Steelers, securing both of those teams one point each. Before we get into Overwatch, we're going to do things a little bit differently here on the Arena Clash. Every week, we're going to be up and down the country, traveling to different arenas, talking to different teams and players. This week, we're in the home of the mighty Bristol Smugglers and Rage has gone to talk to one of their League of Legends players. Thanks, Del. So I'm joined here today by Chez. Chez, you play League of Legends, don't you? I do. How long have you played League of Legends for? Uh, for about five years now. And what champion do you main? I, uh, I'm a dirty Thresh main. Ooh, that sounds interesting. So what does Thresh do? Um, he's a support champion. So he, uh, I live in the bot lane. Um, with Hidden Amori, my AD carry, and I basically keep her alive and I keep the rest of my team alive. Well, thank you so much, Chaz, for that. Now we're just going to go over to Overwatch. Overwatch this week sees the Smugglers take on Nottingham Alt in their Group A Arena Clash debut. Can Nottingham be the second debut team to secure a win this week? However, it's Group D we're looking at this week, with the Bradford Rams Overwatch debut facing off against the Kingston Harriers, who came second in their last group season. John Allen will be your caster, and we will join him at the start of the game. Winston jumping straight on in. Will start to dust rock. Even the front line there, you can see Reinhardt backing off. Let's get charged back out, and that's the first pick up for uh, the Kingston side. Leo able to take down the Zenyata, follows it up with a second. They've got three picks already. They should be able to push straight on through here. We don't make a trap to the back, but it's not going to make too much difference. They're already pushing up onto the point. Diva. In the charge along with the Winston. They're just going to get the deeps down, and that's going to be the first point almost over and done with before he can, before can even take stock of what's going on. And I don't think that Bradford were able to take stock either. Only 18 seconds left to go for Bradford. They need to do or die on this stage. 
It's the first map of a best of two, and they're going to give this one over, it seems like. Ten and seconds, they need to play mobile. They finally swapped out onto a Tracer to try and get some mobility to push forwards to the point. But is it too little too late? Two seconds left on the clock. They're stopping them getting on. They started the contest now. Here goes the beat. They are dropping it down onto the point. They're going to go for the contest, but already the damage is a little bit too much to contend with. They're losing players left and right. They've already lost one of their healers. They find a second onto the Reinhardt front line. They're losing their DPS as well. And this is going to be curtains for Bradford. Kingston stands strong. They're just cleaning up the scraps at this point. What a buffet they found themselves. It's going to be Bradford taking the loss on game one. Kingston took their first game by a landslide. And if they continue their performance into the second game, this could well be a very convincing performance. They have one last chance Bradford needs to find the entry here on Hanamura. Oh, a lovely headshot from Bird's going to slow things down even further. They're going to be at a massive disadvantage, not quite able to find the Tracer. But here goes the charge, a nice Junkrat trap to stop it out and an ult to follow it up. We find the double kill and that is all she wrote. Ten seconds left on the clock. Tracer trying her best to try and find the point, but the recall's already used. Low health's going to mean that it's going to be very difficult to stay alive. They're holding on the point. They turn all their attention to the aggressive Tracer. Widow just holding that frontline. Leo shutting it down the back. And that's it. That's first stage, round one complete. And Kingston holds strong with a convincing defense. Kingston start to push in. There goes the Nano Boost straight onto the Zarya. 90 charge as well. That is absolutely huge amounts of damage being pumped out right now. You can see they just wiped off the face of the board. Three kills already picked up for the Kingston team on the attack. Four players on the stage. They have a Zarya to contend with. High charge and a Graviton surge. No one left on the defense. And that is an absolutely devastating push. Kingston with a flourish. Take the first point. Take the game. Take the series 2-0. So play of the game here coming in. Casper Zarya. Devastating push with the nano boosted high charge Zarya. You can see they're just going to nano boost it. They take down the Diva Mech almost instantly. That's a lot of defensive capabilities taken down. And as I said, the flanking here is not able to make use of the of the Arissa shield. It means that they are able to just push straight on through. In Group A, Nottingham Alt kick off their Arena Clash debut in style, beating Bristol Smugglers. Our other result was a draw between the Lionhearts and the Enigmas. In Group B, yes, result! Cardiff Saints beat the Guardians. I'm Welsh, you gotta give it to me. Doing Shadow Cymraeg, do we be on Cymru? A girl's gonna have some national prize. And in the other less important match, Vikings beat the Armada, but Group C, Steelers beat the Castrols and Hunters beat the Clyde Claymores. In Group D, Harriers beat the Rams and Manchester Swarm beat the Nighthawks. So, Kingston Harriers getting off to a flying start there. Now we've had Overwatch, only one game left remaining. Well, here we have it. League of Legends. Nottingham Alt are making their Group A debut against the Norfolk Nighthawks this week, and the Rams and the Claymores make their respective Group B and D debuts themselves. But our action this week comes from Group A. The Bristol Smugglers are facing off against the Tyneside Guardians. Hitbrain will be a caster for this. Here comes Chez as well to keep him alive. Hook gets flashed over. He does manage to get out and first blood for the flay comes down. Haven now trying to take a little bit of damage, but Hinamori can't quite connect what he needs. And Haven will be able to walk out. It's a one for one trade in the jungle at three minutes. Professor Brian Cox though getting engaged on by Akamu in the mid lane. There's going to be the ulti as the chains have connected. He is gat gulling him down, but it looks like Akamu with the ignite will be able to return the kill. One more W forward should be enough. The distortion comes out, the Q comes down, and the Sigil of Alice finds the kill in the mid lane. Chez finds himself yet another kill. Lee the Dealer's looking to try and count tidy up though. A counter strike is flayed away once again, and Lee the Dealer loses all of his health. Hinamori gets it. The hook goes for miles. Akamu is on the run. No, he's big in and out of the fight as Brian Cox is going to fire onto the back. Foster's bombs there, and it's a double kill to Hinamori. Looking to maybe hit some damage out as Shock Roach has got the help of the Rift Scuttler to help them take down this first inhibitor turret. And actually, they're sticking around. Maybe going to look to try and take it. Dave goes forward, can't quite connect anything, as that's going to be another dragon secured. And Hinamori with eight kills on the board. It's a double kill. Twitch now has popped the ulti, but can't quite find it. Can't quite make it connect. Brian Cox with the shield stays alive. And they're going to be able to walk out with every inhibitor. Oh, Haven, Haven, Haven.
This is town number two, short to follow. Professor Brian Cox is going to stay alive for a little bit longer as Lee the Dealer can't quite get at the damage. Brian Cox is alive. Dave is seriously forward at this point, and we're actually going to see Rizuki staying alive. He's trying to get the damage up, but he can't quite. And now the Nexus under fire. Flash forward from Rizuki. He has dropped down, and Brian Cox picks his six up. That is Bristol with a 26 minute win. Bristol secured the first game with confidence. Going into the second game, things looked to be on Bristol's side. Haven steps forward, throws a Q in, has connected it so he knows where they are. Plodink needs to be careful though, the flash knock up, followed up by the kick, followed up by the ignite, but the drowsy goes down, and first blood gets picked up by Professor Brian Cox. The team have picked themselves up the Ocean Drake. Shop Road actually looking for the dealer. Good chains of corruption. Flag and drag will not save you for long as there's a feast available. Dave finds the kill. That's going to be an ulti from Plodding though. He's trying to get their life, but Jez with the Ignite manages to secure the kill. A little bit of a hard time. Dave gets shuffled back. Dragon does get secured. It was actually a Cloud Drake. Now we see Brian Cox get the wallop through, but they're still staying alive. It's 70 minutes and this fight is monstrous. Chess with a double kill. That's going to be returned by Brian Cox. And now everything has gone right. And Jumper Feast goes out and it's the full ace. Now we're seeing potentially a shuffle come through as he actually gets silenced. Knocked up Chess once again, playing in Insanely good, but Akumu's turned it around and Hidamori is losing his health. He's going to be forced to go golden, but Haven can secure the kill. Chez could look for an opening, has got everything available to him, but Rizuke going forward. Cataclysm's going to shut down Dave instantly out of the back as Rizuke wallops the bad line. There's going to be a massive gnaw into the Emperor's Divide, forcing all of Bristol down. Brian Cox is untouched in the fight, but that is the end of Shrock Roach. That is the end of all four members. It's a massive engage coming through from a tight side. He goes in for the shuffle, the silence, the knock up, and Dave finds the kill. Nexus under fire, 27 minutes, and Bristol take two wins. We're gonna take a look at the play of the game from this series. It wasn't the game winning play, and actually Time Flight didn't win at all, but as you see, Lee the Dealer gains a massive opening with the Cataclysm, but it's all about Rajuke on the Nar here. Two members back into Akamu, who forces three back with his Emperor's Divide, securing a massive shutdown for all of Bristol. They start to lose members left, right, and center, and Brian Cox is the only one who remains at the end of the fight. It wasn't enough for them to win the game, but it was a seriously, seriously solid fight for them. So another win for the Bristol Smugglers, this time in league. Nottingham Old also won their match against the Norfolk Nighthawks, making this two for two debut. In Group B, Rams lost to the Centurions, but Bristol Cribs secured a draw against the Kestrels. In Group C, we saw the Lionhearts bring the Harriers into a nosedive crash, and the Steelers beat the MK Enigmas. Over in Group D, the Humber Hunters beat the Plymouth Armada, and the Clyde Kramers secured a debut win against the Vikings. So that's it for this week. Stealth, what did you think of it? Well, we're in your second home. How could it be anything other than great? Don't forget, guys, you can follow us on all of our social media. As Stealth would be so kind to model for right now. Facebook. And our VODs are available on our websites as well. YouTube. And our official Belong website for all the extra information that you'll need. But from us, thank you so much for watching. Stealth, thank you so much for being here. Ah, you're welcome. And we'll see you all next week.